Sunday, December 7th, Seven Gates. The Watcher drove his army without rest through the fleeing remnants of Rabicum's forces and into Seven Gates. We are there now, inside the pass, where he then clashed with the deceiver on his way east. The bodies of the undead are everywhere, melted and broken. It seems inconceivable that anything could have survived. I don't know why he attacked the deceiver, unless somehow he found out what was going on in silver mines. One of the veterans said that these two had it out after the battle for Tyr 12 years ago, and that the Watcher barely survived. I have a feeling the real reasons for what happened today go back even farther than that. Whatever the case, while the battle raged only a few miles away and we thought the Watcher was coming for us next, I was glad nobody had asked me to carry his damned arm. It looks like the volcano will keep seven gates open through the winter, so Maildun is sending out patrols to retake the pass. The Legion's growing fame seems to draw danger like a bright candle attracts moths, and if any of the enemy survive the floods and fighting, I'm sure we'll be the ones to find them. So ends the 17th year of the war. This should be easy. They're fighting each other. Well, don't jinx it, dude. That, uh, that does point out one of the cool features or, or gimmicks of this particular mission. I remember when Quake was first released, some people were kind of jazzed about the fact that you could get the enemy monsters to attack each other. If you if you could get them to damage each other. And that, that doesn't happen in Myth generally, but in this map you've got two two different factions, I guess. And if you can encourage them to run across each other's path, then they will fight. And since we don't have any really heavy hitters in our unit mix here, we don't have any dwarves or berserks, yes! then if we encounter a large group of enemies, we really do need to find some clever way of cleaning them up. And uh, the dark on dark violence is the best way to do that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't really call this map a change of pace because a lot of the myth maps are really different from each other. But it is sort of a breather. Uh, once you figure out the general twist to this map, once you figure out the gimmick, it's, I mean, it doesn't really compare to the intense uh, micromanaging or big, big group battles that you've had in some of the previous maps. So it's kind of a reward for, for the punishment that Myth has been giving you up to this point. Yeah. At least, at least for a while here at the beginning. Our mission, by the way, is to find a shade and kill it. And as usual, we don't really have much indication of where this enemy is going to be, so we just have to explore around. I'm going to head off to the north here to get a better idea of what our immediate surroundings are like. I'm keeping my archers in tight formations here just because of geography, basically. If we get into a missile battle, I'll see if I can loosen them up a bit. Um, okay, we got a got a dark group coming at us with three fetch. Yeah. Which makes me a little nervous. If you remember from Silver Mines, one fetch was pretty much a match for four for newbie archers anyway. I've got veteran archers, which is a different proposition. But three fetch yes, sir. is scary. It looks like we won't be heading to the east either. Let's back up the way we came. Got it. Now this east group, you'll notice it's it's easiest to tell on the Solus in particular that, that uh, this group is the blue variety. And the north group here is the gray variety, so what we want is for them to be on a collision course. Which seems to be working out. If blue keeps coming, there we go. So as long as I stay out of the way, 
they should soften each other up quite a bit. And I do like watching the bad guys fight each other, so I'm not going to fast forward through this bit. I'll leave one one unit up here. No, don't attack them. There we go. That was close. I'm going to leave one unit up here just as an observer so I can make sure this fight is in my perception range. Just because I want to watch it, but also because I want to see how many of these fetch get injured or killed. Because that's really the most important thing. The best outcome would be for the fetch and the solace to pretty much wipe each other out. But there will be some survivors. I don't know if you can see it in the recording too well, but when a fetch fires off its lightning blast, you might notice that it kind of deflects the soulless arrows. If you're using a fetch in multiplayer, you can sometimes even intentionally use that as a defense if you're fighting another missile unit. Time for us to clean up. Which looks like it'll be pretty easy on these fetch. But I'm gonna get a lightning rod out here just in case. There we go. <laughs> that was a little bit close. I heard him charging up for a shot there. But we got him. So let's just go ahead and go back the way this patrol came, because presumably that means that there won't be many dark units in this area of the map for a little while yet. I do really like the texture map for this mission. It's it's different than the stuff we've been seeing. I guess it's supposed to be glaciers melting away and kind of leaving a scoured landscape behind. It's nicely done. I should also say something about the name of the map, or the name of the mission, Seven Gates. In, I mean, in game terms, this is supposed to be a mountain pass, so I would, I would assume that the Seven Gates refers to some geographical feature. But uh, Bungie is kind of infamous or notorious for having an obsession with the number seven. They tend to stick references to it into their games. And the the great thing about numerology, of course, is you can just put a few references into your product, into your game, and then your fans will find a lot more that you didn't even put in there. So you get a reputation for being really ingenious. I think Myth doesn't really have as many references to the number seven as, say, Marathon or Halo. Yeah. But I would I would guess that Seven Gates is just kind of a kind of a nod to that part of the whole Bungie mythology. All right, we've got another fight going on up here that we didn't even have to we didn't even have to encourage. They're doing it all on their own. So let's go clean up after them. Got a larger group coming along behind them. Let's um, let's back the archers up, just as a precaution. So this group doesn't appear to have any fetch in it, but it is still kind of a kind of a big group. I'm pretty sure we could take that out, but if we don't have to, yes, sir. Let's not. Let's see if we can fish around for a blue group to yep. come play with them. Are they running away? Don't run away. We're we have big plans for you. Yes, sir. There they come. Got it. Of course, I haven't found my haven't found any playmates for them yet. These might do. They're definitely blue. Yes, sir. Of 
What do they look like? Same sort of group, Solus and Thrall. Leave my little observer out here. Ooh, they've got some fetch too. Okay, so it'll be it'll definitely be a good thing to get these groups to beat on each other. I'll stash my watcher behind a tree. We're moving. Hey, what are you waiting for? I just like bringing people together. Those fetch are going to have a serious friendly fire problem if they if they don't move out a little bit. Yeah, they're basically zapping each other there. There's one nifty little detail. You notice dark units have a kill counter also. Skull symbols rather than shields they get the same sort of veterancy effects that our units do. So it looks like these fetch really hose themselves by standing in that tight group. Let's go ahead and get started with the cleanup. Just gotta be careful about those trees there. But they're not so much of a worry now that the last fetch is gone. Yes. That was mine. Okay, last of the Solus. Almost. Got it. Got him. Yes, sir. We've got some big rock plateau of some sort over here. Don't don't think it's passable. Hmm. It's interesting, there's some passable areas up top, but we're not gonna be able to get there immediately from here. So let's just keep going northeast. So the mission says that Scarapunt is trapped by the rising water. Shades are sort of vampiric. They they don't like water. They can't cross even shallow water. So that might be sort of a hint on how to find him. I don't know. We don't we seem to be kind of running out of water here. The other thing I need to ponder a little bit is how we're going to fight him, because Shades have that same chain reaction explosion spell that you saw Ulrich use at the end of Out of the Barrier. Which means we can't just throw a big wad of units at him. Hopefully we can keep the archers out of range and poke at him and maybe I can just split the warriors up and come at him from different directions. We'll lose a few warriors that way, but so be it. Yes! One more fetch. Yes, sir. Well, it looks like it may be running from something.
Come on, come on. Got him. Ah, uh, good. More water. Maybe that means maybe that means a shade is nearby. Not a shade, but more units, more enemy units. Yes, so, we're probably on the right path. Poor fetch, caught between a rock and a hard place. Alright, so we just have your basic thrall death march here. Let's go ahead and speed that up. I'm not really letting my warriors get much action in this yep. particular map. I guess that's okay. I like to keep them nice and green for for our inevitable encounter with the shade. Well, I probably won't save them though. I think that chain reaction explosion effect is is a one shot kill for units with a warrior health. Okay, yeah, there's our shade. Scarapant. And he's wounded at least a little bit. Just kind of seems to be toddling around there. Okay, so let's see if I can if I can put my outstanding plan of minimal casualties into action here. Yeah, that's a scary little dude. I guess I'll just um Yes sir. Just kinda spread out to the sides. Sir? On my way. As much as I can. Yes, sir. On my way. I, w I would imagine that once I start picking on him with archers that uh, he's going to start coming this way. Sir? Right. All right. How about you? Oh, hey. He survived. For a while. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, no. Jeez. Okay. Have I screwed this up? Casualty. Maybe. Okay. Oh no, I think we're good here. Casualty. Hey, What's uh it. I think we're doing more harm than good with our archers. Casualty. Friendly fire. Yes. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, that was pretty good. Okay, go us. We managed to kill one of those nasty shades without the help of Alric or one of the nine. It was wounded, but you know, let us let us have our little victories. I actually realized just now that I had named one of my units in that mission the Watcher, my little observer unit. I was actually just making a geeky comic book reference, but that that is also the name of one of the Fallen Lords, the one whose arm we happen to be toting around right now. So I hope I didn't get us any bad karma there, but so far so good. We've we've cleared out the pass, and we can go ahead and push on into the east now, take the fight to the bad guys, so let's go ahead to the next mission and see how that works out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir? On my way. Casualty. Cowards. 